in a network of, of churches like this, we have uh, these, you know, of course, these, these individual, relational, spiritual families that interact together. It, it's such a you know, holistic way that each individual unit embodies, you know, really the, 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 the whole of the church, a whole of the commandments of the New Testament about how the church lives and ebbs and flows. So it's a, it's a very good question to consider, of, you know, why do, we, why do we do a gathering? And so, uh, and the reality is, for, for all of our existence of Radius, we have done a, uh, a weekly gathering uh, that invites every member from every church to come together on a Sunday. And so there has been, you know, a lot of question over the years of why do we, why do, we do a gathering? And maybe the, the best response is to say, you know, what? Why wouldn't we, you know, <laughs> or for an individual within the network that goes, why would I take my, you know, hour and a half, two hours and give over to a Sunday night gathering if I already have so much, you know, intimacy with my uh, relational community? And, and our response would be, why, why, why wouldn't you? You know, why, why wouldn't you? And, and our understanding of this uh, is not a New Testament you know, law. It's not a, uh, there's no, there's no verse that we can clearly point at in the New Testament that says you must, you know, attend a, a, a larger gathering on a regular basis. You know, a lot of people point to the um, Hebrews passage about not forsaking the assembly of believers, but if you even read the context of that passage, it, it really points to um, a, a pretty deeper relational interaction with one another that spurs one another on. Very challenging, very real uh, intimacy going on there. And so the word assembly doesn't, doesn't necessarily uh, uh, equate to lots of people in a room. It, it could be a, a gathering of two or three people. It could be considered a, an assembly in, in that word. So we don't have any you know thing that says you have to do it and that but that's what's so fun right is as believers we don't want to be living lives um, that they're about surviving or getting by with what's you know the least required thing there's something jesus does in us where he he wants us to want him he wants us to say there isn't any force, forceful, like ought to kind of thing here. It's, it, I'm just willfully, voluntarily desiring God and desiring the people of God. So uh, the way we've set up the gathering is it's not something that we, you know, take attendance and you're in or you're out, whether you show up or not. But we would like for the people who are within the network of Radius that, that really have that kind of fervent desire to worship God to, to join in God's mission, to, to be devoted to a family that's really an extended family beyond just that smaller community they're part of, but to see themselves as, as connected at a congregational level with other families. And uh, we want those kinds of people to voluntarily show up and uh, be fully present in, in the desire to to want to be with people and be with God in this way. And so um, and that's the way we've sort of set the gathering up. It's, like a, it's almost like a why not? You know, we, we, we don't walk around and, and, and make everybody show up. It's not a thing where it's, it's required. But it's a thing that in the life of Radius, what we've seen over the years is that most people who have, you know, thriving, beautiful, deep uh, relationships with, with Jesus, they, they want to be together. They want, and not at the expense of, of mission. It's not like they're, uh, you know, if, if people balance their time well and steward their time well, uh, they're going to have a spot in the week for this level of just, you know, set apart time for uh, the worship of God in a, in a bigger setting. And so uh, most people, the way they tend to, to understand the gathering, if they do it from a healthy place, it's that, you know, the gathering is, is in a way, it sort of re-emphasizes all five of the values of what we call the ecclesial minimum. It doesn't do it at the same way. You know, to taking the Lord's Supper at a gathering uh, feels uh, like, a, like a different experience because it's bigger and broader than, let's say, taking the Lord's Supper in a group of 15 people where you're just, you know, confessing sin out loud to one another. It feels different, but it's, a, it's beautiful in a different way. There's something wonderful about the realization on a regular basis that, you know, there's more going on here than just the thing that I'm involved in. I think it's very healthy to see yourself as part of something that's, uh, that's connected to who you are and what you do. There's an associated relationship with, with other people that are in the trenches right alongside you, but yet you don't, you don't interact with them as deeply on a regular basis. There's something wonderful about that. And there's something wonderful about a, a unified,
terrified, you know, a set of voices all crying out to God, or there's something wonderful about all centering on the gospel together and just seeing a room of people that you you can't know or don't know intimately, but you just you know they're hearing what you're hearing, you know they're responding to it the way you're responding to it. It is it's it's amazing. You know, what we found about the gathering is that those people who who walk in maturity or aim at walking in maturity but but who for whom the prize is christ they love christ um that the, the gathering fits into a, a really special place in their intimacy with god we've also found people who've come from uh, backgrounds of 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 uh, understandings of a church gathering that where they've placed it really really high in the past and so now it's hard for them to adjust and sort of relearn um, a way of interacting with god where that gathering is not a a forceful thing or a thing he just looks at you and goes you better be early you better be on time but to, to relearn that for some people, it's a little bit of a curve, a little bit of a learning curve with what we do. To, to go from I ought to, I should, to going from that to, you know, I, I want to. I, I desire to offer myself in worship to the living God. And I desire to feel a sense of connectivity with these people. So uh, a, lot, a lot of times that, that is a process, a curve for people. But as a whole, we have found um, almost across the board, the, um, the, the, the healthiest people in the Lord over the years have been the people who can prioritize and who can live from a place of desire so that they can offer this very special time. Uh, maybe not every week, but, but regularly, they offer this really special time to the Lord that seems to, um, to have wonderful, wonderful um, effect on the, the lives of these people. So we continue to offer this gathering. Uh, we, we love it. It's a, it's a lot of fun and uh, we love being together uh, with a lot of wonderful people uh, under a wonderful God. So uh, this is our, our goal is to continue, continue doing this gathering. Obviously, as the network grows, it'll get more and more difficult to have you know, every participant in every church into the same space at the same time. Um, but we hope to continue this congregational space of a gathering um, for the, the glory that it, it continues to bring God.